muscles slide they don't stretch and this all happens right here in the sarcomere this is one section of a muscle fiber there's an M line with myosin fibers Z line with actin so when that muscle contracts actin is going to slide towards the M and when we extend it's the opposite it's all happening and then we get major movements like a flexion which is shortening the angle extension increasing the angle adduction adding to the middle ab is away like a baby abduction in a hospital that's a pink code pink is in the color we all rush to the doorways okay alexa is showing us good abduction moving the knees away from the midline using her lateral muscles danny is going to show us a good example of adduction add using his adductor muscles to move towards the mid some terms here dorsi means the top top of the foot flexion plantar means the sole of the foot flexion inversion toe rolls out all right this is a common angle roll eversion is not so common and it tends to be very painful pronation palm down supination like carrying a bowl of soup palm up muscle names seem overwhelming but let's make some sense out of it by shape transversus across oblique slanting rectus means straight so in the abs transversus abdominis these muscles go straight across we don't see them because they're deep obliques come down rectus that's your six-pack we all have a beautiful six pack, by the way. Um, I've dissected enough human bodies to know, but we have adipose covering them. So um, it's, it's kind of neat that uh, it's all there all the time. A beautiful six pack in all of us. Bassus means big. So we have a big lateral muscle, big medial muscle, and straight down the middle, femoris, rectus femoris. Deltoid is triangular, serratus is jagged. Belly, gastrocnemius, big calf muscle, lateral and medial belly. Underneath is a sole shape muscle, the soleus. Sartorius S shaped, that helps us cross our legs, that's why it's called tailors. How about a slender muscle along the midline, the gracilis? Bi means two, two heads. Try means three. All right. You spend enough time with these words and it all starts making sense. Like gluteus means rump. We have a big rumped muscle and a mid-sized rump muscle. Fascia means band. We have the tensor fascia lata, TFL. And it works together with the IT band, iliotibial band, that's going to abduct okay alexa was using this muscle sometimes causes pain at the lateral aspect of the knee i mentioned deltoid but how about under the spine of the scapula is the infra spinatus under spine all right back muscle there trapezius trapezoid shaped when this one contracts you can imagine it's going to elevate and rotate the scapula. Big, powerful muscle. And that's how we work that muscle. We elevate and rotate. Nice review here. Adductor is going to be midline for adduction. Gracilis also for adduction. As we move further away, like the tensor fascia, we expect these to pull the legs outwards when they shorten. Tensor fascia. Big medial muscle, vastus medialis, big center one, rectus, large lateral muscle here. Yeah, there's the S-shaped Taylor's muscle, the sartorius. Yeah, give it some time, and soon this will all make sense. Brachium means arm, so two-headed arm muscle. Rectus abdominis. 
chest pectoralis major major we have a minor as well temporalis think of the temporal bone of the skull and how about the frontal bone frontalis we have that look of surprise that is the frontalis in action how about a powerful muscle to close the eyes orbicularis means circular oculi means eye or the powerful kissing muscle think of the first time you fell in love you could kiss for 20 minutes maybe longer circular oral muscle or circular mouth muscle okay you seen the pattern forearm muscles sometimes when we first learn these they look impossible how are we ever going to learn all these muscles without color but often tell us their names here's Eben uh, I'm showing the muscles of Eben's forearm when the anterior muscles palm side contract you're going to see a shortening of the angle what do we call that shorten the angle flexion now we can't walk around like that all our lives so we have extensors on the top that extend yeah so sometimes their action tells us also what their name is okay i'll just let that roll so let's take a look at this extensor digitorum extends the fingers extensor digiti minimi extends a little pinky extensor carpi ulnaris on the ulna side elbow side or radialis on the radius side you gotta know some bones sometimes it'll help you we have flexors as i mentioned on the anterior view <laughs> And their name will help you understand what talking about movement here let's look at these terms like antagonists that's when they fight against each other you're going to see the pectoralis major in, move, in motion here because when this muscle contracts it's going to adduct there it is adduction towards the midline okay it's a little blurry but you can see and on the back, the latissimus is going to fight against the pectoralis, but the pectoralis has help. Serratus anterior is a synergist. It helps the prime mover do its job. And so these are going to adduct forwards, whereas the latissimus, let's take a look at the latissimus, is going to move the arm back. It kind of shows us a little bit. Because you can imagine when these muscle fibers shorten, the arm is going to come back. It's like a recovery stroke for the um, butterfly in swimming. All right, so we've covered these guys. Let's a little review here. Shorten the angle and flexion. Extend the angle. Extension. Ooh, abduct. Away. Adduct towards the middle. Supinate. Palm up. Now, to be honest, one muscle could be a synergist, but then it could become a prime mover in other situations. Or it may be an agonist, a prime mover, such as, let's say, the bicep is flexing. It's the agonist or prime mover. But when the tricep is extending, it's the agonist. So there's sometimes some trade off here. It's like the muscles of our body are balanced against other muscles in this really cool movement mechanism. All right. Thanks for listening.